Hello again. Right, we're back in. Uh, if you did uh, have a lovely barbecue on Sunday, hope you thoroughly enjoyed it. This is going to be, I think, going to be quite a brief one here. We might have to go off topic a little bit, but this is just the uh, miscellaneous carryover from yesterday because otherwise I can't get that thing uploaded in time. So, uh, right, so miscellaneous this week questions. Mark Newman, he says, um, I had a job and got the collection address, but it wasn't ready. It was posted for 9 a.m., but the customer said it wasn't going to be ready till 2 p.m. I rang the shipper and apologised. Um, Oh, well, I ran to him, sorry, and he apologised, quite rightly so. We had that one yesterday where the guy turned around and said, needs to be delivered as soon as possible, then turned out to be delivered three days later. And um, actually, the, he got a complaint against him, which I still can't get my head around. Um, he apologised, a miscommunication between themselves. The shipper asked how much for the cancellation. He said it wasn't a big job, 65 quid, so I asked for 50%, which he was happy with, and so was I. Um, I'm new to this. Did I do the right thing? I would say, yes, you did. It really is, when it comes down to cancellation fee, it really is a matter of, um, it's between the two of you. I have had jobs before, and I've made the mistake where I have driven to like, um, I was like Billa Ricky or somewhere like that. Got there, the job wasn't ready, and I took a 50% cancellation fee, and I have actually subsequently gone, well actually, in the nicest possible way, my friend. It's now, I've driven for an hour to pick, pick this up. Um, I was going to pick it up, I was going to drive it to Watford, which is not far from my house, I'm not going to get another job. I've kind of done the job, and they will actually give you the full fee, um, but I think in that particular case, you haven't done the diesel, you may still get another job. I think, you know, I did do one about cancellation fees, and it does depend on the um, size of the van, and it does depend on the circumstance. And they're, they're like I say, I wish there was a graph I could give you guys, which is the way I see it, of I'm here at this time, this is how much I should charge that job, but it's not quite that straightforward. Different, every job is different, different shippers pay different money, but I would say in that particular circumstance, as long as you, if you're happy, and he swallows it, and everyone's happy, that's the way the world should be. So I think you've done the right thing, but you kind of learn as you go. You get a feeling for it as it goes on, but no, I think you did the right thing, Mark. So well, fair play to you, like, you know. So, um, uh, right. Uh, Binder Singh says, can you explain why some vans have rear wheel and some vans have dual wheels? Um, and when will we need to take, take a grass in vans? Take a grass in vans seems to be one of those things that people are going on about, but there, there is absolutely no evidence that I can see at the moment the, the current legislation is thinking about bringing take a grass in vans. So I'm going to say we're going to cross that bridge when we come to it. The same as we're going to cross all these new emission zones that are going to come in if you haven't got a Euro 6. The same as when it turns out we've got to get electric vans and the same as when robots take over. You know, let's not worry too much about what's going on out there. We'll, we'll, we'll get to it when we get to it. As far as dual and rear wheels is, it's a real misnomer, this. it's a strange one. So if you're going to buy like a, a Sprinter or a Crafter, single wheelbase at the back, carries three and a half tonne. If you're going to carry a buy tran Transit, um, or Transit, the, um, the Luton van, it's got a dual wheelbase at the back. So you've got, one's got like four tyres, two have got four tyres, the Transit's got six tyres. Now, because it's got, theoretically, because it's got double um, wheels at the back, it carries the load better because it distributes the weight over four wheels rather than two wheels. This is my understanding, it's probably wrong, just ignore it. But the problem that you've got is because you've suddenly stuck an extra two wheels on, the, on that van, and those wheels and the hubs and everything might weigh 50 kilos each, that van actually now, despite the fact it's capable of carrying more weight, can actually carry less weight. Because the Sprinter and the Crafter instantly weigh 100 kilos less than the Transit, because when you put it on a weigh bridge, there's two less wheels. So the truth of the question is, do you need four wheels at the back so that your van can carry a three and a half ton loaded weight? And the answer is no. Now, if you're gonna put a pallet of Coke on the back of a Luton, two wheels at the back is enough. I know this because I've driven around in a Sprinter forever, which only had two wheels at the back. Wide, wide transit have, four wheels at the back, I don't know. Like I say, whatever I just said was probably predominantly wrong, but the wise guys out there that know better than me will probably stick something in the comments and I'll probably be able to correct myself next week. But fundamentally, I think I'm right. So let me know if I've missed something, guys. Please let me. So um, what else we got? Uh, Donna Masula says, 
couldn't see you. Need to, oh, mate, I've cut you. I've cut you off. I'm sorry. I've done a thing. I've, I've only got the first four things. Please, I'll, I'll try and get to it next week, or if not, repost a question. and I'll do it again. Um, I think he's. Is he? Um, yeah, I don't know. Sorry. About that. Oh no, that's the guy. He's making. Don said he's making very good money on the CX. A few people have gone how. <laughs> In fairness, he's tramping. Um, uh, he goes out on Monday, comes back on Friday, goes for it in a four metre van, and he is bringing in serious amount of dough. Um, don't forget to take your tax off that, mate. You know, it's, it's a few other things you haven't taken into account with your wear and tear and all that kind of stuff, but he's doing very, very well. Best of luck to you. Good luck. Um, Martin Clark says, um, I have a Fiat Decato short wheelbase. It's 2.8 metres. Should I quote for medium wheelbase jobs? Likes the channel, and he's done work for, for uh, Ben at HPC. Yeah, that's just gone over there. That's that's the bit that cut off in the beginning. That's cut and paste. This is me being a, a dinosaur when it comes down to this computer -y stuff. Um, 2.8 is funny. Uh, it is technically a medium wheelbase. It's a large medium wheelbase. I mean, like three metres to get a long wheelbase. Just, I, I would say, I would still look at long wheelbase jobs, find out what it is, and ring them. If you, you know, if you, if you happen to be, I'd be wary. But if, if the right job came up in the right location, I'm thinking I could have that and go, right, I know it says long wheelbase, but I'm in a medium, I'm in a 2.8, any good to you? And they'll either go, I'll ring the customer, or no, sorry, mate, you need three metres, or actually, yeah, no, that's fine, we can get it sideways. But yeah, I, I would still I'd be, be upfront and honest about what you've got, and that way, if they want to book you, they will, and if they don't, they won't. So. Uh, Domain Game Guy says he has a clean, are we on the license thing? He said, I got a clean license. He got three points for doing 60 on a 60 road in a van because it's 50, not 60. Yeah, I know, unfortunately, ignorance is no defense of the law. And although I've read the highway code and nowhere in the highway code does it say, um, and it, it says if your vehicle is not articulated and if it's, not, it's under three and a half tons, then normal speed limits apply. Actually, no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> my code was, was fibbing to me, but yeah, the, 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 the trick is if you're on a single carriageway in a van, I'm, is that right? I know it's certainly true for a lorry. I'm 50 in a lorry. Um, I don't really know. I, actually, I'm not sure in a van. Uh, I think it might be 50. But anyway, he got the three points, and he said I'd rather do the three points than the course. Personally, I'd always take the course. I liked having a clean license. I have actually got an SP40 now for doing 48 in a 40 mile an hour zone, which was one of those temporary zones that went 40, no it's 50, no it's 40, no it's 40, no it's 35, no it's 50. It's, it's like, I didn't even know. And I was just with my rummy out and I went, okay. It's gonna happen, isn't it? You know, it's kind of part of the course. I'm, I'm gonna be free for another course soon, so hopefully I'll be able to get me three years off and fingers crossed get it all off. You know, you've got to try and pay attention to these things, but it's, you know, sooner or later you are gonna get a puncher. Sooner or later you are gonna prank it. Sooner or later you are gonna get a, a, a camera or something like that. It's, in the game we go, you you, you know, you've got, you've got to be the best man in the world not to, like, you know, so. Um, Ian Merrick. He's out there doing the thing. He said, afternoon, Pete. He says, I'm waiting a response from the transport manager, Mr. Shapps, having written to my MP regarding, A, what has the nationwide road to logistics program delivered? No pun intended. I didn't know there was one. Um, for the taxpayer since its inception. Um, it was supposed to help address HGV driver shortage and growing for, for um, as far as I can tell for the next 10 years. I think there is theoretically, I don't know if there's a driver shortage, but there certainly seems to be a shortage of people that are prepared to pay drivers what they should be getting, so apparently. Um, B, um, the expected start date of shortages of goods in UK supermarkets to HGVs, and C, plans to mitigate something like that. So good luck with that, my friend. Um, yeah, I don't really understand that, to be honest with you. I do tend to be the guy that just gets in the van, drives something, picks it up, delivers it. But I'm pleased that you're out there doing the thing. I know you've also got something going on with the um, the Facebook or something like that with trying to get drivers um, cheaper wages, uh, cheaper fuel costs. Um, and anyone out there who's doing anything for us needs to be applauded. And anything I can do on the channel to help your way forward, please let me know, and I'll, I'll gladly will, because uh, thank you very much for contributing. Um, Steve Campbell. Oh, we did one on what you can co-load. Because I said that whole thing about co-loading, people get the needle because it means you turn up late. But then I suddenly thought, well, you can't actually co-load chickens and foxes, unless they're in cages, because when you get to the other side, you'll just have foxes and a lot of blood. Um, he said, and I, thought, and I said, are there things that you can't co-load? He said, you can't co-load chilled goods in the same part of a fridge trailer as frozen, because they're going to freeze, reasonable point. And he said, you can't co-load furniture and household rubbish. 
I will consider myself educated. Thank you very much. Uh, Lee Westcott says about the uploading thing. Have you looked into 4G um, and like Wi-Fi? It just is what it is. It's to do with like. It, I kind of thought it'd be quicker. It's not quicker. I, I, the way around it is either for me to record it early or split it. And in this case, I'm going to split it. So hopefully we'll be okay. But thanks very much for your advice. Um, Shubes Gaming says, HBC, the professional company that blocked me for not disposing of their customers' planets for free. <laughs> um, and, and, oh, that, 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 what's going on there? Some Wi-Fi, the dog was going on there. Um, well, I think he was unlucky there, mate. Like I say, done a lot of work for them. They've always been fine for me. Um, Superhero Transport Manager does a lot of work for me in the truck. And um, I, I just think he was unlucky there. I'm sorry, but uh, you might want to give him a ring back and go, should we give it another go? It's up to you, you know, or, or maybe just carry on. There's, there's other firms out there, you know, so they're, they're friends of mine, but um, everyone's experience is different. Van on the run. He said, right, let's see now. He said, how often do you download the tachograph unit in each truck? Is it necessary for compliance or is it just a backup? Also, does Taco Master come with a with the DigiView kit or is that a separate bit of software? And is it a subscription or a one-off payment? Right. The the DigiView thing that I bought was dear. It was about 200 quid, but or 180 pounds, but it's fantastic. It's changed my life. I now rather than having to go backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, I can just go read the cards, bring them back again. Um uh, you have to download driver's cards within every 28 days. I download the driver's cards weekly because the problem is if someone does something, if you download at the end of the month and they've, they've messed up on like the 4th, yeah, well, what happened on the 4th? I go, I don't know, three weeks ago, I don't know. If you download it every week, you can go, what happened Tuesday? Oh, yeah, I had a nightmare. I was going to stop, and then I couldn't stop, and then, well, you know, it said it had parking, it didn't have parking, that's fair enough, like, you know. Um, downloading tachograph heads, you have to download those every 56 days, so it's kind of every two months. It, it, what I tend to do, I tend to do them monthly, because it takes a little while. I am going to do a video just because that the, the, the DigiView stuff that comes to explain how the DigiView thing is rubbish um, but just to show you it it's really straightforward you stick in a company card you put the head then you watch the thing wiggle around you take it out again it's not rocket science but yeah that's the long and short of it and um, Taco Master is a pound a driver a week so at the moment it cost me three pound a week which in fairness is still 150 quid a year for a piece of software it's not there when you know like software can be crazy Spotify's a tenner a month but if you had like 50 drivers it would be a lot more but then you might want to consider, I mean, people out there, again, the wise guys that know better than me go, yeah, well, actually, Taco Master, it is only a pound a week and it's well worth it. Or actually, when you get to this point, you want to go into this or that and the other. In fairness, if you do know better than me, please let me know because if you can save me some money, I'm always happy. Uh, Kevin Porter, he says, he says, thanks for the videos. He says, I'm doing the COVID stuff at the moment. What van would you recommend to start off with? Kevin, it's a very personal thing. Uh, I have done a video on the best fans for running on the CX. Um, some people like small. I've always been a big guy. I like the trucks. Uh, some people just want a little van. It really is down to you. It, I would always say the bigger you get, the more money you can make, but also the bigger you get, the more the aggravation goes. But I still don't think it goes up at the same rate. For a bigger van, more money, slightly more aggravation. But there is a video on what van. Have a look, see what you think. Tiffy Oso Cornwall. He says, hi P, uh, I hope you're good to see Gold Members back on. Gold Members got his own channel out there, he's doing the thing. Um, and the others back. He said, what is the heaviest weight that can be expected to remove on your own uh, without any help? There must be a max weight. Have you ever struggled? Um, you know, I hope you're, hope you're good. Hope best for Cornwall. Hope it's lovely down in Cornwall at the moment, it's super sunny. Um, it's down to the individual. I have one this weight. Um, Again, I had like an easy day halfway through the week. I think it was like Wednesday or something like that. And it was forked on, forked off. And the second one, they come out with this box. And this box, it was like an alien coffin. It was about that wide by about that big, but five metres long. And presumably it couldn't have been stacked at an angle, which is why they put the truck, because they needed a six metre bed. And they've come out like that, the two of them, and it, kind of, it was heavy enough, so I'd give them a hand. Um, but it was really easy. I mean, on and off in nine minutes. It seems to me that the, the, the quickest I can get a, a, a job on is nine minutes. Pull in, it's on, it's strapped, and I'm gone. Or it doesn't need to be strapped because it's up against the bulkhead, nine minutes. This one I strapped, I still done it in nine minutes. Um, got to the other end, 
Again, super easy. Um, straight to the postcode, straight there, straight the goods in. I told the guy, he went, oh. It was nice because I've got a bad back. He said, I threw it out playing football. And I went, don't, well, don't worry. He said, he said, no. I said, well, we'll do this. He said, no, we'll do it. I said, have you got a pallet truck? And he goes, yeah. I said, well, I'll tell you what we do, right, okay? We're gonna get the we're gonna get the box off. You do one end, I'll do the other. We'd lift it on. One end we lift onto the pallet truck. The other end, I'll carry. And then you just wheel the pallet truck and I'll push it. For which I got the title of it, you're too good for this job, and ledge. Yeah, that's over the top. That's not really, that's not, that doesn't, it's very nice to hear. But um, bless him, I said, mate, I don't want to go home all day thinking, I've put that geese in the traction. He's like, oh, you know, I said, just get it down slowly. Put it. I said, if you've got two pallet trucks, we'll get them onto each pallet truck. There are always ways around this. It's like trying to get a four meter, uh, uh, like, uh, yeah, you can get a 3.9 meter pallet on a Luton van that isn't a curtain side. As long as it's got a tail lift, as long as you've got a fork truck, a tail lift, and a pallet truck, and you know what you're doing. There's ways around this. You don't need a curtain to get four meters on a four meter bed if you know what you're doing. I was going to do a video on that, but I didn't get around to it, and I'm not in a, in a van anymore, but there is a way. Um, but yeah, it comes down to you. I'm always a bit gung ho. I've always a bit like, yeah, no, I'm having this, you know, kind of thing. But it really comes down to you. And if you're not comfortable with it, say, I'm ever so sorry. I'm not, you know, I'm the driver. My job is to get it here safely. Now it's here safely. I'll do what I can but it's your job to get it off safely. So you can do that. Um, Bashi S says, I joined the Curie Exchange. It's probably the worst decision of my life. Doesn't work for everybody. I've always said, it's not a magic wand. No one's gonna knock on your door and give you a load of money and you get out what you put in. Some people like it, some people don't. Life's a bit like that. Sorry it didn't work out for you, my friend. I hope what you're doing now is better. Um, Jacob Love says, quick question. How many vehicles do you own and how many employees do you have? Good videos. Thank you very much, Jason. There are six employees in the firm, if you count the fact that it's me and my business partner. And then there's two drivers, which are Harry and Gordon. They're both in the 18 tons. One's in the LF and one's in the CF, sleeper, although he doesn't tramp. We possibly would, but we don't really ask him to. And then there's Gemma in the office. So Al is kind of my business partner in the office. He's in charge of doing the paperwork and the new business. Gemma does um, all the invoicing and all that kind of stuff and all the disavowed debt. And, and, they, and they run the trucks, they control the trucks, they book the jobs, and they also book the, the jobs that we freight forward for the end users. So we get calls from our end users, they need a van. We haven't got our own vans anymore, that proved to be a nightmare. So. Um, if we need a van, we put the job on the CX and we use a, normally like guys we know to go and do the jobs for us. Um, and, that, and the system's working okay at the moment. We're trying to build up a bit of dough. When I get a bit more money, I'm going to go for another two slots on my operator's license. I wouldn't mind another two trucks because the phone's ringing off the hook. And they, 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 the people are ringing us all the time and we just haven't got the capacity. But you don't want to explain too quickly because you, you know you can come unstuck and you can fall flat on your face. And I'm still learning. So but that's exactly where we are at the moment, my friend. Um, Adi Mohammed says, if only you could do the same video now. Right, it's, I did a video about um, how much you can make on the CX. But give us an idea with the pandemic. And I will. It hasn't changed that much. Admittedly, that was three years ago, so I'd like to be able to turn around and say, ah, oh, you, can, you can quote even more now. You can't. You can quote round about the same money. But it hasn't really got that much less either. Some people say the market's been flooded, not in my experience. Um, and I know there was a pandemic, but it struck me that during the pandemic, things still needed to be delivered. I haven't had a single extra day off because of the pandemic. I was doing the Argos, doing the lorries. I'm, I'm, I'm doing exactly the same as I was before. Looking back on it, in the vans before the pandemic there was maybe more jobs to choose from but i think now we're coming out of it now is easy so i would say that still stands that's pretty much the money that i say quoted then you can quote now uh james says hi pete you should do a video about your experience of trying to scale up with other drivers using the courier exchange and possibly tell us the flaws that you personally found it and how you pivoted your business that video is about oh 5,000 hours long and it's basically the channel. The whole channel will take you from when I started on the markets and when from the very first time I started the Guru Exchange. That will show you my journey. So um, be selective. <laughs> Just watch the odd one here and there. But no, that, that has kind of been the journey and the, and the journey continues. So, um, and in conclusion, Steve Campbell says you are um, still allowed 12 points on your license. 
the, the courses instead of points. I had 48 points on my license. I didn't get banned, but I ended up in prison. I have a clean license now. That's presumably because you can't drive in prison. So while you're in prison, your license is getting cleaner. Mate, stop it. <laughs> I think he's him and his dad are doing the removals now. I hope you're doing all right, Steve. Good to speak to you as always, mate. And finally, Christo Zeb says, in Australia, it's still common to you call a gorilla, uh, uh, call a $1,000 a gorilla. Yeah, you can call it a gorilla. If a monkey's $500, then um, a gorilla is, or 500 quid, then a gorilla is a grand. And I still say, I still like piano. That's it. Bank holiday. Enjoy the sunshine. Get the barbecue out. Get the mother-in-law. Cook on a barbecue. That's not true. I like my mother-in-law. She's lovely. And Tuesday tomorrow, time to take care, take money. <laughs>